Hi guys, Daniel Ganga here. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I post-process my ghost fungus images. In particular, the image you see on the screen behind me. I'll also talk a little bit about what I do at time of capture, as this is quite important also, as you'll see later in the video. Now, I'll make these images available via download so that you guys can follow along. You'll be able to find them over on my website, Nightscape Photographer via a blog post, or you'll be able to find them in the description of this video. Now I'm really new to YouTube, so if you do like this video and you find it useful, please subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate your support. Anyway, let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome back. We're now in Lightroom. So as mentioned in the intro, in this video, I'm going to show you how I post-process my ghost fungus images. So we're going to take this image you see on the screen, which is a straight out of camera image. We're going to blend it with this image, which is also straight out of camera, to create this image here, you know, the final image. But before we do, we need to talk a little bit about what I do at time of capture. So we'll go back to this first image. So as you can see, this image is, is quite dark, apart from the ghost fungus. So we'll jump up to the right hand corner and we'll talk a little bit about the settings. So I've used an ISO of 6400. The I use a Canon EOS R and it performs fantastic at high ISO. So I'm not too worried about using such a high ISO. I've used a focal length of 14 millimeter, basically just to give me some depth of field and um, give me a wide angle of view. I've used an f-stop of f2.5 and a shutter speed of 20 seconds. So my goal with this frame here, with this individual frame, was purely to um, expose for the color in the ghost fungus. So to retain as much color through here as I could and as much detail also. So the rest of the light that you see in this image, it, it's really just the ambient light and there's, there's no external lighting or anything like that with this frame. And we'll switch across quickly to the second frame now. So as you can see, this second frame is quite different there's quite a bit of light in the background there, a lot of light on the tree trunk through them throughout the moss as well. Uh, you can see there's a fair bit of light across the top of the ghost fungus. And we've we've lost a bit of colour really through our, our ghost fungus here. So we'll jump up again to the right hand corner. I've used the exact same settings as I did for the previous shot. So the only difference here is that I've used some external lighting to, to light the, the foreground and the background of this scene. So what I did here was I used the Loom Cube 2.0 in its lowest setting and I held it directly above, so straight up here above and down towards the ghost fungus and I held it there for a couple of seconds during the exposure. So that's what's lit all this tree trunk and all the moss and the, the top of the ghost fungus. Now we can see all this light in the background and what that is, is my friend Julie. She was taking images of ghost fungus um, over here somewhere behind the frame and she had her torch on. So I took advantage of that as a little bit of background light to, to sort of um, bring a little bit of detail in there. So that that's what you can see. So. This frame is definitely quite different to the first frame. And there's a reason why I've take, taken the two frames like that. And it's really so that when we, when we blend them together, uh, we get the detail from the background and we get this detail here through the moss, but we also retain as much detail and color as we can through the ghost fungus. Uh, so look, that's what I do at time of capture with most of my ghost fungus images. I find that doing it this way, you can really pull out, um, look, the most detail possible. And it works for me quite well, I think. 
Um, I'm sure there's people out there that, that take their ghost fungus images quite different with a lot lower ISOs and longer exposure times, but this is just how I do it. Anyway, so now we'll get into what I actually do in post-processing. So we'll open up this first image. So obviously this is the straight out of camera image. Nothing has been done over here as far as settings go. We've got my stock standard for night photography white balance, which is your 4800K. Uh, we're just in normal Adobe color. We'll, we'll just leave it like that, I think, for now. So what I'd do here is I'd start having a look at boosting up a little bit of this color, boosting up a little bit of detail, you know, throughout the shadow, shadows and all that kind of thing. So let's head over here and play around with a few settings. So I think the first thing I'd like to do is boost the shadows just a tiny little bit. And we'll see what that does. I think, I hope you guys can see that. We don't want to go too far as have a look what's happened here. We've absolutely destroyed that image by pulling up the shadows too much. So we don't want to do that. We want to stay just a tiny little bit. Uh, we'll also pull the exposure up a little bit. Now, what I'm looking at there is I don't want to bring up the exposure too far and introduce noise. And I don't want to blow out the detail here in the ghost fungus. So I just want to kind of bring up as, as much detail in that exposure with that exposure change as I can. So that might be a little bit too much because we're going to do a few other things as well. So let's back that off a little bit. So you can see here. And now we're going to add some saturation and vibrant. So uh, with with saturation and vibrance and really any setting that I that I change on Lightroom, um, I, I look at it as a little bit as a lot. I really don't see the need to really crank up saturation too high. Um, so a little bit is a lot and it really goes a long way. So let's crank this up a little bit and we'll see what happens. We'll crank it fully first. See, that's looking a little bit over the top. We won't do that. We'll go back and we'll just say, go to that 12 point. We'll also play around with the vibrance. So we'll crank up that vibrance as well. And as you can see, we're, we're pulling a lot of color through this area of the ghost fungus. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the brightest ghost fungus and making sure that I don't blow out the color and, and make it all blocky and things like that. So. I think that's probably enough um, as far as what, you know, as far as this frame goes for the color and exposure. So we'll scroll down over in this panel. We'll have a look at the sharpening. So we're at 40 on the sharpening. So that, you know, a lot of the time I don't really go any, any higher than 40. But what I do like to do is I like to use the mask so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to click on this slider and i'm going to click on option i'm on a mac so you might have to work this out if you're on a pc and i'm going to slide this slider across until the white areas are sort of around all that ghost fungus and the edges of the ghost fungus and the gills so what i'm doing here is i'm selectively sharpening the areas that I want to draw people's eye to. So the ghost fungus there and, and those gills. So I like that and we'll leave it there. Now we'll also come down to the noise reduction. So although I'm super happy with the way that the Canon EOS R handles noise, I still add a bit of noise reduction in there. And I'm just going to add a little bit again really it's just a, a little bit is a lot so let's not go overboard let's leave that about say five so that's what i do to this first image um, and that's pretty much it so we'll sneak across to the second image now so now we've got our second image up now rather than coming over here and changing all the settings again over in the sliders we're going to head down to the left hand corner, select the first image that we've already edited or we've already post processed. 
we're going to hit copy and we're going to copy all the things that we did on that first image across to the second image so we'll press copy here we'll head back down to the left hand corner open up our second image and hit this paste button so as you can see all our um, adjustments out that we made on the first image have now swapped across to the second one so it looks pretty good as it is and um, I'd nearly be happy to just continue editing well post-processing with that but what we might do is I'd like to pull the exposure back just a little bit we can actually see over here that that's um, a little bit overexposed it doesn't really matter um, a little bit of overexposure won't hurt the image really but what we might do is we might pull that exposure back just a tad and I'm not too worried about uh, these highlights in the background what I'm worried about is the detail across the top of the ghost fungus you know that important detail so having a look at that we'll go back to the first image again and we'll have a look at the difference between them so there's quite a bit of difference between the two images obviously and we're starting to see in this second shot we're seeing a lot of really good detail through all the moss and the background and everything else so now that's all I'd really do to the second image uh, I think it's enough like I said a, a little bits a lot and just copying over those um, settings from the first image are, are probably more than enough for this shot so what we'll do from now is we'll select both our images so let's go back to the first one and we'll go command I'm on a Mac so you'll have to work this out um, if you're on a PC and I'll click on the second image as well now what I'll do is I'll hit control and we'll go up in this menu and we'll edit these two photos over in Photoshop but we'll open them up as layers so this might take a few seconds okay we're now in Photoshop so if we have a look over on the right we can see our two images imported as layers so what we're going to do here in Photoshop is we're going to blend these two images together and we're also going to do a little bit of noise reduction um, using a bit of a trick that I use with my astrophotography so the first thing we want to do is blend the two images and it's really straightforward and really simple so we want to go over here and make sure that we've got the top layer selected and where we see normal we just want to select the lighten option so what that has done is it's just blended the two images together and showing the lightest portions of, of each image so if we go back over to our two layers here and we turn that top layer off look what happens see we've lost the detail that was shown through here through these shadows and a lot of the detail that well the extra color I guess um, and brightness that was shown through the ghost fungus gills so let's turn it back on again this this layer over here wow look at that it's a massive difference <laughs> we've got so much more color through through the ghost fungus and we've got so much more detail in these shadow areas so now really that's all I do there to to blend the two images it's really that straightforward um, some of the things I'd keep a little bit of an eye out for um, at this point in the post processing would be whether I've overexposed something but look all this looks pretty good so we'll leave it like that and what we'll do is we'll come up to the top and we will flatten the two layers together so we'll flatten image we can see over here on the right that it's flattened and now we want to do a little bit of um, noise reduction so what we'll do here is we will come up to the layer again 
and we'll duplicate the layer. And now that we've we've got this little dialog box up here, so we'll just press OK. But now that we've duplicated the layer, we can see that we've got the background and a background copy. So on this copy, what I'll do is I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so on the image so that we can see what's going on. So we'll press the magnifying glass. We'll zoom in a little bit. We're having a look at basically the areas that might have a little bit of noise in them. And wow, um, the Canon EOS R is just awesome as far as it goes for noise control. That's ISO 6400 and you know, that's pretty clean. There's a little bit of noise, but that, that's awesome really. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll get back to what we were doing. So what I'm going to do now is with this layer selected, this top layer selected, I'm going to go up to the to filter at the top of the screen. I'm going to come down to noise and dust and scratches. So what the dust and scratches does um, with my noise reduction is when we have a little bit of um, you know noise in the image we might start seeing a little bit of speckles you know a few little speckles um, you know a little bit of extra noise through through areas like this the shadow areas um, but the dust and scratches removes all those little little speckles that, that we might see and with astrophotography it's amazing so it's just a, a trick that I've learnt with post-processing my astro um, images and what it what I use it for over there is helping control the noise but also a star reduction it works really well with star reduction but in this image all we're really doing is wanting to you know remove a little bit of the noise and look this image was so good in the first place you can't really see much but we'll we'll have a play around with the sliders so we'll play around with this threshold first and we'll ramp that right up to 255 and as you can see there's a little bit not bit more noise showing through through the stem of the um, ghost fungus now if we crank that all the way to the left you know you can see it'll, you can see quite quite a different but what it does is it really softens up the image and we really don't want that so we want to find a happy medium and so what I do here is I'd probably set it about say the 75 level and we'll have a look and see what that does so 75 is looking pretty good remember we're really zoomed up on the image here a hundred percent and you know it, it does look a little bit soft through there but it's mainly because of how far we're zoomed up on the image um with the radius i don't really play with the radius much um, again this is one of those things that I think it's a little is a lot and we don't want to overdo it so we'll try and minimize what we do here um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that there was no real noise or or speckles in the image so you know it's it probably wasn't really needed for this image but I did want to go through that process with you we'll press OK and what we'll do is we'll zoom back out and see that full image again. So that little bit of noise reduction that we did there, yeah, we can't we can't really see um, a lot from that, but that's purely because the image was so good in the first place. So what we'll do here, I'm finished in Photoshop, and we'll come back up and we'll flatten these two layers again. Now those layers are flattened, we can see it over on the right. That they're flattened and it's it's that single image what I'll do now is we will whoop, we'll save this image so we'll go up to save as we get this dialog box I like to save as a PSD file so the Photoshop file and I'll rename this and I'll call it ghost one and we'll save it. Okay, now that we've saved that image, we'll exit Photoshop and go back to Lightroom. So we're back in Lightroom now. Um, if we head down to the bottom left-hand corner, we can see that we've got an image selected. 
and that's our ghost one file so that's the file that we just saved out of Photoshop so now that we're back in Lightroom there's still a few things that I'd, I'd like to do to this image so the first thing we'll do is go over to the right and I'd like to add just a tiny little bit of sharpening um, with the sharpening we don't want to over sharpen so it'll be very very gentle with that a little bit is a lot so I just want to add a little bit of sharpening and we'll also mask that so we'll click on the mask slider hit option and we just want to sharpen um, the main parts of the image that we want to draw people's eye to so now that we're at this point, there's still a few little things that I want, want to do to this image. And the next thing I'd do is crop the image. And the reason why I'd crop it is to balance the, the image up a little bit. You know, it's a little bit hard to get everything perfect at time of capture. So what we've done here is we've just, we'll just crop it down and um, get everything nice and balanced. Now, while we're in this, you can have a look over here and we've got lots of different options for cropping you know we can crop as a 16 by 9 uh, 1 1 so a square crop so we've got a lot of different options there but I'm going to stick to the original size and what we'll do here is we'll just balance up the image a little bit and, and crop a bit of that dead space out now as you can see here with the with the grid that's um, a grid that shows the rule of thirds um, now with this with this grid we can use that to help us balance up this image so what I'm going to do is put those um, the the main ghost fungus the the big bits on the right and left in the center of the frame as, as we've got a bit of dead space around the top and bottom of the frame and I think that'll work best for this image um, and we'll also move it a little bit across to the right uh, no we'll leave it there So I think that's that's balanced up the image really nicely. Um, the the tree was on a little bit of a lean um, on location, and I had the camera and lens leveled. So sometimes I might rotate the image a little bit to straighten elements up, but we'll leave it like that here because I know it was all level at time of capture. So one of the other things I might do at this point in time is add a little bit of noise reduction, but I don't think we're going to need it with this image. But we'll zoom in anyway and we'll have, have a better look. As you can see, um, you know, there, there's not a lot of, a lot of noise here. Uh, this was shot at ISO 6400 and it's pretty clean. So, you know, the Canon EOS R is awesome at high ISOs. Like, I couldn't be happier with that camera, to be honest. And I'm, I'm re really happy with the way that it performs. So we're not going to add any, no any more noise reduction. Uh, but we might with other images. But we won't with this one. We'll zoom back out. So we're almost there. We're almost finished. So what we'll do here next, I like to add a bit of a vignette. So we'll head back down to the vignette. And we want to use this post-crop vignetting. Um, and the reason I like to use this is um, it draws your eye into the center of the frame a little bit uh, to the subject and we can hide a few distractions in the corner of the frame such as these bright leaves up here. So again, it's one of those tools we don't want to overdo it. Now, some, sometimes I'd also make a copy of this first before I add a vignette just so I've, I've got an image there with, with no vignette. Ah, but here we go. So if I slide this slider all the way to the left, the, the vignetting slider, the amount, you can see if we go all the way to the left, it's just overkill. It doesn't look very good. Well, I don't like it. Um, so a little bit is a lot. So we'll just use a little bit. And what that's done is it's, it's just taken a little bit of the brightness off these leaves in the corner and helped, you know, bring our eye to the center of the frame here. I also like to use, you know, change the midpoint. And what I do there is I generally take the midpoint all the way to the left. And see how that's darkened up the frame a little bit? 
I'm quite happy with that as it's it's still it it's bringing my eye into this center part of the frame which is the main point of focus of this image really now I'd also like to feather the vignette so I generally take the feather all the way over to the right so that that's feathered that vignette nicely now if we went the other way have a look what happens oh we, we can see that edge it, it looks terrible so we'll slide it to the right um, so I'm pretty happy with the image how it is um, it's a little bit dark through the center of the frame but for this image it probably works really well um, because it was taken at night and, and it's a bit of a moody shot but what we might do is we might bring the exposure in the center of the frame up a little bit so we'll scroll up to the exposure slider and what we'll do there is we'll just add it the tiniest amount so look at that so you can see the changes that makes so just a tiny little amount again a little bit is a lot and really um, I'm finished with the image now so that that would be my my final image um, the only thing I'd do from here is I'd export the image and I'd export it in a couple of different ways I'd export a small file that that would be compressed with a program called JPEG Mini and I'd compress I'd I'd export that one with a watermark and, and the reason for that is the smaller file and the watermark I'd share um, across social media. It's just an easier file to, to work with for social media. Um, I'd also save a large JPEG, so a, a full size JPEG because JPEGs are very easy to use in, in different ways and probably a TIFF file as well so that, I've, so that I've got that big file there in case I want to come back and edit and all that kind of thing. Um, so look, look, that's what I'd, how I'd go about, um, editing my ghost fungus images. Um, look, I really hope that you guys got something out of this video. Um, you learnt a few new techniques and had a little bit of fun there. So look, if, if you did find the video useful, um, and you liked it, please subscribe. My channel is new and, and I'd love your support here. Um, but look, we'll leave it there. That's our final image and I, I think it looks pretty good. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.